Welcome to another video on car maintenance on Mike's channel and today we're doing the Pathfinder. We do the Pathfinder a lot, don't we? Yeah, it's because it's what I'm driving. Okay, so spark plugs. Spark plugs go like 100,000 miles now. Um, this iridium, you know, all this new technology, right? So I got 112,000 on this set of plugs and I'm going to do them. Now this is really a lot of fun. I've done plugs on my cars in the past never had to pull the intake manifold just to do plugs. Hey, let's take a look. So the plugs I'm replacing with are the NGK Iridium IX. These used to be a recommended plug for the 17 Pathfinder, but now you can't get them anymore. This is the last set of IX plugs you could find in the entire town. And they tell me at the parts store that they can't even order them anymore. So you have to get the laser iridium by NGK or go to the dealer and get the dealer replacement plug. If you look in the owner's manual, it says that the recommended plug is a Denso plug. Not a bad choice. I mean, Denso, good plug, right? At the dealer, 21 bucks a piece. Yep, 21 bucks a piece. Uh, the iridium IX that I just got from NGK, nine bucks a piece. Yeah, yeah, they're iridium. So they, you know, and they were recommended. So I'm gonna use them. Let's take a look under the hood. We have this thing here that's gonna come up and then we're gonna see the intake manifold. So let's just pop that up. You just grab that on the side and it has these little things that hold it down. Oh, there it goes. And it just pops up. Probably should dust it off, huh? So we get rid of that. And then what do we see is the intake manifold, okay? So we've got three plugs up front, and let's see if we can get them. One, two, three up front here in the front of the motor. Guess where the other three are? Because it's front wheel drive, the motor is in sideways, right? The other three, the other three are back there. Back there. You see, back there where you, where you, where you can't even get your hand. This, this has to come out. This has to come out in order to get to the back side of the motor to do the plugs in the rear. Okay, so removing the intake manifold to get to the spark plugs in the back under here. They're down in there. All right, this looks, when you look at it, pretty freaking scary, right? I mean, if you don't do this every day for a living, you've never done it before, there is Lots and lots of stuff connected here. All right. So I took some time to take a look at all these systems and analyze what actually is here. And what I've discovered is that a lot of this stuff is connected to the intake manifold itself. Most of these connections, most of these tubes and, and vacuum tubes and everything else are actually all interconnected on the manifold itself. All this stuff looks like you could probably just leave it right in place. It's connected to the manifold, it's connected to something on the manifold. I really think my first attempt at this is going to be to disconnect the air from the back of the filter housing right here and that will give me some room to move. Going to disconnect over here also. This is going to remove this assembly which connects to the air. The air back of the you know the air intake okay is all got all these systems connected to it down in here okay. I'm not going to touch any of that. I'm going to leave it all connected to the housing. All of this is connected to the housing, and there doesn't appear to be any reason yet to disconnect any of it. I believe that once I disconnect from the back of the filter housing, and I disconnect here, so that gives me some room to move, and then I take out the air intake hold down screws, so I can remove the actual air intake, I'll be able to move this entire unit as one unit. 
I may I may have to disconnect right here because this is screwed down here so to get this to move I may need to disconnect on either side of this just to get this to to move freely but I, I think really it's gonna be just a few simple connections and some electrical connections here and I think this this whole thing is gonna move as one unit I think this whole thing will move as one unit. So the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the battery. Then in here you can see the you can see the coils. Actually, I pointed it out as the plug, but it's actually the coil. And this rubber piece just moves up out of the way. And when that's out of the way, it exposes the bolt that you're going to have to unscrew. And I'm going to disconnect, after I disconnect the battery, I'm going to disconnect the electrical connection to the coils that are here. And then I'm going to unscrew the hold down for the coil and pull the coils. And then I'll be able to get at the spark plug. And I'll pull the plugs. It's really kind of straightforward on this part of the motor. Should be a breeze. Okay, so you can see here I've disconnected the battery, and this has got a bunch of crud on it. If yours looks like this, well, it's time for a new one. I uh, hadn't planned for this, so I'm going to clean this up best I can, put it back on. I'll come back another day and replace this. should be fairly simple. It replaces right here. just going to unscrew this and put a new one on, because that is horrible, horrible, horrible. Just clean that up. So I re removed... Sorry for the wiggling around. Let's see if I can get a light in here. You can see I've removed the connection to the coil. So the way that works is the top of this, that little piece, let's see, am I getting a good view in the camera here? Probably not. Let's see if I can get a light on this. Get a light on this so I can show you what I'm trying to show you. Yeah, is that it? That's yeah, pretty good. Okay, so this piece right here, this is uh, actually the hold down clip. What you're gonna do with your finger, of course, is you're just gonna push down on that. When you push down on that, you help, you'll hear a click, and that means it's been released, and then you're gonna pull this out, and that's how you disconnect that from the coil pack. You're gonna see how narrow that shaft is and how long it is where the actual spark plug goes. So to get the plug in there, it's gonna have to go down that long shaft. Well. One of the things the plug socket is supposed to do is grab the plug a little bit. And this doesn't grab the plug at all. Like I can just lift that right out of there. So when I put this spark plug into that shaft where it goes down in, you know, it, it's just going to slide all the way down there. It's just going to go right down the shaft. What the hell is that? You know, so I'm not plugging the door last as a good tool. Matter of fact, I didn't even need to buy it. Waste of money. The bolt head on the coil pack is, I believe that was a 10 millimeter. You know, this is a Nissan. Of course, you're going to need metric. So I've unbolted the hole down for the coil, and you can see that the coil just kind of comes out. Don't worry about how it goes back in because you have to line it up with the hole down. It's only one way it goes in. So you just pull that out. Out she comes. Just like that. At the end of that, it's gonna be a spark plug. Where is it? Oh my God. Oh, right. Yeah, you thought it would be that easy, huh? There's your spark plug. Can you see it down there? You see that? You see that thing way down there? Yeah, there's your spark plug. So you can see the shaft there where the spark plug is, right? And I've loosened the spark plug. And as I suspected, that Doorlast spark plug socket, which is a POS, doesn't grip the plug at all. So the plug is down there and loosened. And how is it supposed to come out of there? Does it just jump out on its own? Do not buy the 14 millimeter Doorlast spark plug socket, POS. 
Okay, so I used the trusty magnetic retriever to get the spark plug out, but I don't really like doing that. Not my preferred method. So I have one plug out. Let's take a look at the original plug that was in there. Here's the original plug. FXE22HR11 by Denso. This is exactly what is listed in the owner's manual as the replacement plug. This sucker, oh my god, look at this thing. I'm surprised it even still works. It's supposed to be replaced at 105,000. It's 112, so it's not really that far over, you know, numbers wise. But look at this thing. What is that? This plug is like almost, I don't know, burn the tip off? That looks horrible. These plugs definitely need replacing. That's a horrible looking plug. Okay, so to get at the plugs right up here in front, couldn't exactly get the socket down the shaft. So, front air intake scoop has to come out. There's a plug, there's a, uh, there's a screw on each end, one on this end, one on that end. Take the screws out, and out comes the intake. This is going to have to come out in order to get the front spark plugs. Okay, so as I mentioned, I was going to disconnect the intake here, which I've done. I've removed that piece completely. So I disconnected at the end of the cartridge and the throttle body and the air intake uh, filter housing. I've disconnected that and taken it out. I've disconnected this unit right here. Let's see if I can get some light on here. This was mounted here. I've disconnected that. And then it was also mounted here. This actually interconnects to a piece that's here and I've disconnected that. So that actually separates these from the intake. So now the intake is clear to move. I disconnected the electrical connections. You don't have to worry about which one goes where because these are pretty short. It's going to be pretty easy to figure out. There is this piece over here. Now the reason I disconnected this is because these lines are going to move with the housing as I move the air intake housing. So now this will move with it also. It's simply one bolt down here. I unscrewed that, disconnected the electrical, which again, you really can't forget which is which, brown to brown over here, it's the only brown one. So now this will move freely with the intake as I move it around. So I'm going to now remove the bolts that hold the intake down and then this whole unit should move as one unit out of the way. So there are a couple things I had to do in addition. I was hoping to not have to remove the throttle body down here from the intake but it was making the connections that were on it were making it too difficult to move the housing so there were four bolts in that so I removed the throttle body from the intake can you see my hand in there so I removed the throttle body from the intake so I took those out there is there is a hose in the back there's a line in the back and I was hoping to get away with not removing that but unfortunately I had to, because that was making it difficult again for the housing to move. So I had to, in order to get your arm in there, get my arm in there, I had to remove the hold down. So hold down right here had to come out. The electrical box had to come off. So the electrical box is just a couple of tabs. Yeah, you hand, actuate, hand activate those tabs. You remove the electrical box from the hold down and then remove the hold down. Then I can get my arm in there to that hole to remove the clamp all the way there in the back. So that had to go in addition. But I think I pretty much got it at this point. The housing does move pretty freely and hopefully I'll get some plugs out soon.